Tonight, we delve into the chilling world of horror cinema, exploring one of the most iconic and genre-defining films of all time. Prepare to be captivated as we recount the story behind the 1973 classic The Exorcist. In the realm of horror, few films have left an indelible mark on both audiences and the industry itself, like The Exorcist. Directed by the brilliant William Friedkin, this supernatural thriller broke barriers and shattered box office records, revolutionizing the horror genre forever. But beneath the film's terrifying brilliance lies an eerie tale that transcends the silver screen. Legend has it that the set of The Exorcist was plagued by an inexplicable curse, as though the horrors depicted on screen had come to life behind the scenes. It's said that a series of misfortunes struck the production, leading some to believe that the film was cursed. Nine people associated with the movie passed away shortly after its release, including actors and crew members. Unexplainable injuries, mysterious fires, and strange accidents added to the mystique surrounding the film's production. Many years, and it continues, trust me, researching the events that occurred surrounding an exorcism that took place in St. Louis, Missouri, in 1949. Also, as readers know, this true story went on to inspire the book The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty and a film version a few years later. Blatty changed around the characters as well as the location of the true events, but based it as closely as possible on the events that took place in real life. At the time that he wrote the book, Blatty did not have access to the so-called Priest's Diary, a document that chronicled the events of the St. Louis exorcism, but he was able to interview Father William Bowdern, the Jesuit pastor who performed the real-life exorcism. At Father Bowdern's request, Blatty fictionalized the events of the exorcism, and to hide the identity of the young man who went through the ritual, he changed the possessed victim to a young girl and moved the entire sequence from St. Louis to Washington, D.C. The exorcist in the book, however, Father Marin, was closely based on William Bowdern. The first incident occurred around 2.30 a.m. one Sunday morning when a fire broke out on the set. There was only one security guard at the Seco 54th Street Studios when the McNeil House set caught fire and burned. The fire was the result of a bad electric circuit, but it shut down filming for six weeks while the set was constructed again from scratch. Ironically, as soon as the new set was ready, the sprinkler system broke down causing an additional two-week delay. Few of the actors in the film escaped personal troubles during the shoot. Just as Max von Sydow, Father Marin, touched down in New York to film his first scenes, his brother died unexpectedly in Sweden. Von Sydow himself later became very ill during the filming. Irish actor Jack McGowan, Burke Dennings, died only one week after his character was killed by the demon in the movie. Jason Miller, Father Karras, was stunned when his young son, Jordan, was struck down on an empty beach by a motorcyclist who appeared out of nowhere. The boy almost died. Ellen Burstyn, Chris McNeil, wrenched her back badly during one scene when she was slapped by the possessed girl. The stunt went badly awry and she was laid up in bed for several weeks afterward, causing more delays in the filming. The Exorcist's makers were also hit by claims that the film contained subliminal messages. A white face which briefly flashed on screen during a dream sequence in the film is one example, but Friedkin later said it was not meant to be fully detected by the audience. He said, you couldn't catch it before VHS, and now you can stop the DVD and stare at it. Friedkin did also add disturbing industrial sounds, along with the buzzing of bees, to heighten fear among those watching. The scenes of Reagan in bed were also filmed inside a large freezer, so that the her breath and that of the other actors could be seen on camera. Shortly after the film was released, Friedkin said, We were plagued by strange and sinister things from the beginning. He said that when he looked at the uncut footage during production, strange images and visions that were never planned showed up on the film. McCambridge provided the dubbed voice of Pazuzu, the demon possessing the young girl Reagan, played by Linda Blair, in The Exorcist. To sound as disturbing as possible, McCambridge insisted on swallowing raw eggs, chain-smoking, and drinking whiskey to make her voice harsh and her performance aggressive. Director William Friedkin also arranged for her to be bound to a chair during recordings, so that the demon seemed to be struggling against its restraints. Friedkin claimed that she initially requested no credit for the film, fearing it would take away from the attention of Blair's performance, 
but later complained about her absence of credit during the film's premiere. Her dispute with Friedkin and the Warner Brothers over her exclusion ended when, with the help of the Screen Actors Guild, she was properly credited for her vocal work in the film. Your mother's in here with his cash. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. Why, hell yeah. Ask her what the hell she done with the wheel. I'd like to know where it's at. And tell her, too, that I messed up the car. I'm sorry. You know, insurance wouldn't pay for it. The Exorcist has had many parodies made about it. This movie is a staple of horror in the horror genre, but many movies have made parodies of this horror classic. From one movie to another, it is a horror comedy's dream to get to making fun of the green pea soup that Linda Blair pukes out. In such movies like Scary Movie, they are paying homage to what is arguably the greatest horror movie of all time. The sour is mine! Hell, for somebody, yeah. This girl needs a damn lesson in sex education. Somebody give me a shot of the penicillin. That's the only thing's gonna cure. My God. Get away from me! The cultural conversation around the film helped it become the first horror film to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, as well as nine others. Blatty won Best Adapted Screenplay, while the sound engineers took Best Sound. It has had several sequels and was the highest-grossing R-rated horror film, unadjusted for inflation, until It. The Exorcist has had a significant influence on popular culture, and several publications regard it as one of the greatest horror films ever made. But the highest-grossing movie of all time for Warner Brothers is still The Exorcist, released in 1973, which made $428.2 million that year worldwide. Accounting for inflation... That would be about $2.9 billion today, more than double the take of any Warner Brothers film released since. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the 1973 movie The Exorcist with the new Exorcist coming out this year. I seen it fitting to do a review on the classic. Please comment, subscribe, and like.